ebo bi igbo ma ma nu asim ka nko echiri azelu e di ko sede e gbo nyo mo na egenti daroli nne nu omo ife kunu si bo na so la ni ni ya na me ni ruwa kwọ no bo sin keta na eastern news 24 e bi abi fine akpo ya evening tea e di kunu si we ma nu o evening tea kan akpo ya ya bo basta ma ki ene me no boda and basta ma ka ngoro wa na azo e me ko wo ko de na obuna ya de enyu no update ye na e me ka se be di chiche kunu na oti fe na e me no e o genya aka aya na akodo wa yo fuma ni fa na e me but information is power so ya me raji we na agba mbo wo teru nu ya bo nu kozi ai na akpo evening tea ni ba kwọ e ma di ko si di o wo ye bia from prime minister wo ri kwa ni ru akwọ nu bo sin keta a ma choko nyo bo na bo ibo mo na genti na nu nu na nu asoso na so ge ya bi ife ige si aya e drop pola your own contribution your own comment ni ruwa kwọ ma sama ki yenda ni ne bia from prime minister kwọ all right over to you sir we have a presentation we want to present our um, we have um, a teenager here in UK, very intelligent. The other day, he went to, he, he made a presentation in one of the Igbo unions. So we said, no, um, well, he must come here and do this presentation, another presentation concerning the Diaphragm War and its uh, importance today. I'm calling on Ben. Ben, if you are here, you can raise your hand. A very brilliant, is a very guru in Bitcoin in guru. Is very good in a guru in Bitcoin. Even in this our um, uh, USBT, he is very good. He teaches people around him um, the how to transact, how to trade with the USBT. So he's a very good guy. And a, a teenager, very brilliant, yeah, from my mother. So then, my minister, you can see Ben, so that he can. Turn your camera and unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Um, greetings, Prime Minister, and greetings, fellow dear friend. Um, on your Ben, can you on your camera, please? Um, since I'm on the 18, um. I just I prefer to keep my camera off for privacy reasons. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. Um. Afambo nze chinedu obadevna, and today I'll be presenting um five interesting facts about um the Biafran War. So I'd like to screen, like share my screen, so if somebody could give me false permission, so I could. Okay. Um, Can I give a co-host, please? COS, please. Uh, Grant him co-host. COS, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's his name, right. please? Ben's iPad. Ben's okay. iPad. Okay. Ben's iPad. Okay, great. All right, done. Ben, you can go ahead. Um, okay. So. Uh, see my screen. Uh, ben, before you continue, please. I hope um, none of your content has any gory images, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no gory images. All right, right on. Okay. Uh, um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Very well. Very well. Okay. So, the Biafran War. Quick overview. Um, the Biafran War, also known as the Nigerian Civil War, took place between 1967 and 1970 due to ethnic and political divisions between Nigeria's Igbo dominated Southeast and the Hausa Fulani led north. Colonel Odemegu Ojuku led Biafra to declare independence in 1967, which led to a military intervention by the Nigerian government, headed by General Yakubu Gowon. The conflict included 
intense battles, human rights violations, and a severe humanitarian crisis with an estimated one to three million deaths from famine and disease. Despite initial successes by Biafra, the Nigerian led and the Nigerian military, sorry, backed by international support from countries like Britain and the Soviet Union, eventually were victorious. The war concluded in 1970 with Biafra's capitulation and its reintegration into Nigeria, significantly shaping the nation's political and ethnic dynamics of today. So an introduction. One of the unique things about Biafra in the history of warfare is that not only was Biafra fighting a war, but simultaneously, Biafra was also building a nation state, which includes fully functioning institutions, such as the Central Bank of Biafra, University of Biafra, ministries and law courts. For example, people were still going to court for petty cases and receiving punishments, or getting married in a church as a normal society would whilst fighting the war. This is what makes Biafra unique, and things like this are what should be celebrated in history. So, number one, the post-war £20 policy. So, at the end of the war, a Nigerian panel concluded that every Igbo person who had an account in any Nigerian bank before the Civil War was to receive £20. At the beginning of the Civil War, Igbo people took their money out of Nigerian banks and changed it to the bank, um, to the Biafran currency. After the war, the Nigerian government took control of bank accounts belonging to Biafrans. A Nigerian committee decided to give each Igbo person a new bank account with just £20 in it. This meant that there were multi millionaires who were stripped of all their money and forced to rebuild off of a mere £20. Despite this thought, the eastern region still grew to become bigger than most of the other regions of Nigeria today, despite the harsh conditions they were forced to build their economy back up from. But what many people don't know is that is what happened to the money that was stripped from the Biafrans. In 1972, two years after the war concluded, the Nigerian government released the um, indigenization decree, which mandated all foreign, all foreign, especially British companies, to be either fully or partly owned by Nigerians, a decree that the Igbos did not benefit from, and it's believed that the money used to finance the purchase of these private interests was on the other side of that £20. Number two, Biafra's crude oil refineries. During the Biafran War, faced with, e uh, faced with an economic blockade limiting the access to petroleum products, products um, the Biafrans ingen ingeniously established makeshift crude oil refineries. Leveraging local expertise and traditional refining methods for palm oil, they improvised equipment using available ma uh, materials like old barrel and pipes. This community-driven effort, coupled with training initiatives, enabled them to produce sufficient refined petroleum products to sustain their economy and military operations throughout the conflict. This technology the Biafrans created is still being used by the likes of the Russians today. Number three, the hijacking of planes. During the Biafran war, Biafran militants hijacked four planes, including two Nigerian Airways planes and two BOAC, which is the British Overseas Airways Corporation planes. On July 10th, 1968, diverting them to the uh, Ulai airstrip in Biafra. This dramatic act was an attempt to draw international attention to the plight of the Biafran people and the humanitarian crisis caused by the Nigerian government's blockade and military offence. While the passengers and the crew were released unharmed, the hijacking was widely condemned by the international community, including the Nigerian and British governments, as an act of terrorism and a violation of international law. Despite the international attention generated, the hijacking did not significantly alter the course of the Biafran war or lead to a resolution of the conflict. Now, number four, the minting of the Biafran currency. During the Nigerian civil war, Biafra declared independence and issued its own currency. The Biafran 
uh, the Biafran pound. On the 29th of January 1968, Biafra began minting its own one pound and five pound shillings, shilling notes in Portugal. These notes were made from paper and not too durable. Then, in February 1968, a second revolution of these minted notes were made in Switzerland, including a five pound shillings note, a ten pound shillings note, a one pound note, a five pound note, and a ten pound note. These notes were polymer made and more durable than the initial paper notes the Biafrans are made in 1968. Once the war concluded in 1970, however, these notes were discontinued. Number five, Omar Bongo Odimba. Omar Bongo Odimba was the president of Gabon from 19, 1967, sorry, until his death in 2009, making him one of the longest serving leaders in the world. During the Biafran war, Omar Bongo played a significant humanitarian role by allowing the adoption of Biafran children who were flown to Gabon by foreign mercenary pilots from France and Netherlands in order to escape the conflict and its devastating effects. My grandmother is actually in this Zoom meeting, was one of the uh, seven girls, um, which comprised from two nurses and five Red Cross girls that had, been take, that had taken the children to Gabon by the planes. She recalls the Nigerian Air Force's attempts to shoot down the planes as frightening for all parties on the aircraft. Luckily, however, the Nigerian Air Forces seem to miss the plane. So, under Omar um, Bongo's leadership, Gabon provided a safe haven for these orphaned and displaced children from Biafra. Many of these children had lost their families and were in desperate need of care and support. Omar Bongo facilitated the adoption process and ensured that these children received proper care, education, and a chance for a better future in Gabon. Subsequently, one of the children Omar had adopted, named Ali Bongo Odimba, went on to become the next president of Gabon. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. thank you, Ben. Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. I even did short notice. You were able to do something. Thank you, Ben. There you go. Uh, her grandmother is part of us. She's part of UK liaison cabinet. That's her grandmother. That she was talking about during the Nigerian war. Her grandmother was instrumental in giving medication and assistance to people. So there are those who are born for this for this liberation. Her grandmother is one of them. And they were. Thank you very much. Yeah, um on this note, my Lord, PM, please um any further exposition Well, well, uh, you know, uh, just to inform uh, our people that uh, the voting is very, very important. Uh, you know, voting is very, very important. The self-referendum voting. Uh, those of you in the United Kingdom, you have a duty to make sure that your people back home participate in the voting. And uh, so uh, you can also help in sponsoring uh, the officials, electoral officials, that are uh, you know going places from places to places to you know do the voting exercise is very very important uh, uh, we need as many votes as possible at least uh, we need to capture those uh, the number or half of those who voted during the general election that's our target and uh, it's just uh, about four million people that voted in the entire Biafra land so we are targeting some reasonable number of uh, voters from that four million. Uh, and we understand that because this voting is, uh, have, is being uh, done in an electronic manner, so our people are not very conversant with uh, this, but uh, we have to do it because that is the option that is available for us. And that's our part. The, uh, the uh, Finland Convention 
uh, the Declaration of the Restoration of Independence of the Afra Convention in Finland is very, very important as well. The, uh, the uh, slot is very limited. So if you have not registered to the, for the event, I would urge that whoever that is watching, either from the United Kingdom or anywhere in the world, you have to register so that you will not uh, be uh, disappointed when you register and will return your money back because uh, the place may not uh, uh, you know, take you because of the limited uh, number. So the earlier, the better for those who wish to come to Finland. And remember that it is still far. December is far, Jan uh, November is far, but it is not that uh, far. So uh, it will be good for those who wish to be in Finland to you know, start the process of registration uh, you know, very early. And um, and then of course uh, uh, we lost somebody in the United Kingdom. Many of you know uh, Victor. Victor uh, uh, Victor uh, lived in the United Kingdom. He was a, he was a very a very big uh, supporter of this government, and uh, we lost him. And so the the funeral. Uh, we are also the government is going to participate, and we are planning. Uh, with the families, uh, those of you in the United Kingdom, uh, some people have volunteered to be part of it, so we will need uh, uh, more uh, people as well. And then when we're going to have a meeting about this, please, we would like the, the United Kingdom to also be part of uh, the meeting where we're going to have it. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll communicate uh, you through the European Rep about uh, the preparation that is being made. So mm -hmm. very important. Both financially and so, and then um, of course uh, our defense is very very important. Uh, United Kingdom has always supported the government very well, and uh, so we'll continue like that. Encouraging all of you, you have done very well in the UK, and uh, we need as many people as possible. Our defense is very very important that. Uh, uh, the resources is needed, finance is needed, just like every other nation that are fighting and uh, trying to protect and defend their land. Uh, they will always be going from one place to another to source the fund until the war and um, is won. The, they have defended their land. The same is happening, the same thing is happening in Ukraine today. So uh, our defense is very important. Nigeria will never see our back until the declaration and defense and recognition of Biafra, you know, no matter how long it's gonna take, we are ready for this. So uh, the United Kingdom, there is no other news I am bringing. Of course, another thing is the, uh, the launching of uh, the Biafra shop. Uh, those of you in the United Kingdom, you know that uh, the launching of Biafra shop is happening um COS which day even sorry it's uh, coming thursday all right so coming thursday will be the launching of the biafra shop so we expect at least reasonable number of people from uk and all over the world to be part of it at least why uh, we are launching it you'll be able to order one or two things to test whether uh, uh you know the shop is uh, working or not so you'll be able to buy, you know, live uh, purchase as we are launching the the Afra shop. Maybe you buy some kind of t-shirt or cup or something with the Afra, uh, you know, design and the signal in it to test the shop. And as you are buying, you are also supporting uh, and the government and, and the Biafra defense. It's very very important. Everything goes to Biafra defense, and of course, with the other. Uh, uh, you know, uh, lobbyist and all that we have, and um, and then of course uh, the issue of uh, radio uh, transmitters is very very important that uh, we cover this as soon as possible because now we need we need the information uh, disseminating uh, system to cover the entire forty state, and now that we are on free to air uh, satellite, uh, it is very very important. That uh, as the voting is going on and as we prepare for deliberation and for the declaration, our people back home 
will be carried along, especially those rural areas that don't have access to smartphones or access to the internet. They will have access to radio to listen to radio. The radio is working 24 hours. It's something to the voice of the Afro as like TV 24 hours. As I'm speaking, it is working. It's live. So these are the updates. And of course, um, uh, everybody knows what is happening now. They have moved the, uh, the headquarters of the, the Navy from Lagos to uh, River State, the Biafra land, the water, for the very first time after 100 years. I'll be, what am I going to say? So it is only now they know that uh, River State is good to have headquarters of the Nigerian Navy. And I told them that we welcome them with our arms to come <laughs> closer to us so that we don't have to send a, a special squad to Lagos to engage them. Let them come closer to us for easy access to, to their facilities. The time will come. So we want them to bring DNA, NDA or whatever they call them, to any place as well so it will be more closer. And their efforts also so that they don't have to fly far before they come to bomb our place. They have to be very, very uh, close. So this is all happening is a sign that we have defeated Nigeria. And all of you know the propaganda they are doing are sharing flyers. And the by Dalu Lindeno, uh, in the a kiss where no one no I and kiss with a new soil in the name. If I may, no person get a na Eastern News 24. I see that oil a drone chadi the number na chuko kabi ma ya no la yo fu no fu. Oto a kuro cha ko ya dere. Ise, ise, ise. E de ko si de. Una no guni ya biya Prime Minister fuga si di chiche and chita ko ni ya evening ti. I before I agani riku oku di a high choli oku. Okay, Bob, over the year, couple of seasons, you know, so I and I stand news 24. Cabalo, key join I and the subscribe or turn on your notification. Kelapi miss any of our daily update or the Zabom Omochuko, Milwaukee, Kelapi miss here. Macarena beginning with the latest information in the menu. You mark is he as over again. Uh, the course he did. I just call out the name of the PM and also Bundan all the local Mazin and the canoe bonyan drink and divo. The gospel of I know that I sent a senate and any five hundred million in cards, and people know not half. I know the Simba, not two hundred and fifty five million. What is happening? Sometimes now, John the Bayo Gin name and I came in I far. I know that I sent a neighbor room up two hundred and something Christians to tell you that this country can never be won. Or blue, check here. Or one or all I guess one on the Biafra liberation and be a Jebuga no Makana Nasokoto. I got Boko Fafa now to tell you the country, the bias. Everything is not working, nothing is working. Only if an hour all everything the paralyze. Only go wago. Check here now. Fine, I'm going to be a Zoku. You want to go? Oh, Dora, you will exchange on your hand over at seven fifty. Now today is sending bo almost one thousand six hundred and fifty eight naira. Imagine, imagine. Ibo bi ibo guna ko ham no no. Kabalo kabalo ke comment ya niya and share ya odempa. Kuli chie more of our blooders and bladders. Kahamali fenemi no bodo. Dalulinen unga ke mesia no mi ibo.